So our next presentation is by Jessica Booth, First Lady Jane Pierce, Applied Research in Performance. And same as we did last time, we'll take some questions for her at the end. Once upon a time, there was a young woman from New Hampshire who met a handsome and outgoing young man. And though she longed for a quiet life with many children, when the man and woman were married, she was swept off by a team to a gloomy boarding house in Washington, D.C. And she was expected to be a politician's wife. Her first child died shortly after his first breath of Washington air. And when the woman became pregnant again, she made the man promise to get them out of that unholy swamp before she lost another child. And he did. And he did not hold an elected office for 10 years. And their perfect son, Betty, grew up sweet and kind and decent. And then one day, they were being pulled by horses through Cambridge when a man on a huge dark steed came galloping towards them. You've been nominated for the presidency, he said to the woman's husband. And the woman fainted, dead away. And then, on their, at first the man was surprised by the nomination, but it seemed only moments later he was president-elect, and they were being pulled by a steam-driven engine from Boston to Concord, when God derailed the train and sent their car toppling. And as they were toppling, the woman watched her perfect Betty soar from her arms and twist in two among the wreckage. The man and woman were barely scratched. At first she thought God had taken Benny so the man could be a better president with fewer distractions. And then, when she found out the man had been scheming for the presidency behind her back, she knew Benny's death was punishment for his lies. So she withdrew to her room in the White House. She wrote long letters to her Benny and fingered lockets of his golden hair for four long years. And she never did forgive the man for trampling their son so that he could smoke cigars and puff out his chest and say, I am the President of the United States. People said he was a terrible president. Hello, everybody. My name is Jessica Booth, and this monologue is from the show 45 Plays for 45 Presidents, which I performed in earlier this semester. Um, I did a lot of research for this monologue because um, the show goes through so many scenes and presidents that there's a lot to take in in a little amount of time. And this particular scene needed to be a really powerful impact compared to some of the funnier or more lighthearted scenes. And only having so many words to do so, I really wanted to look into Jane's life and seeing what everything in this monologue meant and how she dealt with it in real life. So Jane Pierce is from New Hampshire. She married Franklin Pierce. Oh, that date is wrong. I apologize. She married Pierce in 1834 in New Hampshire. Um, she did not particularly like his political career at all, but she went along with it and she did in fact live in DC as um, the monologue states. And throughout her whole life she suffered depression, which I found really interesting because looking at a timeline of her life, you can see where she went in and out of those phases. For example, um, with her letters to her sister, you can see where she's unhappy living in Washington, or when she has her son, she's very pleased to have a boy, um, as she lost two sons already, and then once more after the accident. So out of all of her children, none of them survived in the end. So the accident is the big part of the monologue. This is the you know emotional climax of it. And it happened in, on January 6, 1853, in Andover, Massachusetts. They were headed for Concord, and the uh, train was derailed due to an axle turning over. And the entire car was flipped off the rail, as both pictures here depict. And unfortunately, Benny was caught between the floor and the wall as it separated, and it came down on his head, decapitating him. His mother and father had to watch that. Uh, Jane lost her only joy, her you know, son, and her and her husband were physically unharmed, but they would never be the same emotionally ever again. So looking now at Pierce's presidency, he was the 14th president and he only served one term. And I believe that's largely due to the fact that he became um, a drunk, he became a drinker, and he was emotionally distressed um, due to his son. Um, when it comes to the Civil War, he did nothing to stop it. In fact, he was part of the decision to make 
can or allow Kansas to choose between a slave or um, free state, meaning that tensions increased. So along with all of this, Jane did not partake in any of her first lady duties until about two years into his presidency. In fact, her sister and I believe her cousin did most of the jobs that Jane herself should have been doing. So when I looked at this um, coming into the show, um, this was my favorite part of the show, honestly. Um, I love this monologue very much. It's easy to look at a monologue and words and figure out, okay, how would I feel? But with this particular scene, I had a historical figure, and I could look at how Jane reacted to the situation by um, isolating herself and not doing her job. You can really see the depression that hit her life, and that definitely um, impacted the way that I chose to deliver this scene. So for this play, I believe that I approached it with how she would feel, and I really, truly believe that by doing the research behind the scene that I was able to better portray the emotions through my acting. And this scene, in fact, uh, got me a nomination for the Irene Ryan Acting Scholarship Competition to be held at ACTF Region 2 Festival next winter. Thank you very much.